Hello everyone, my name is Omri Gazit. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Asserto, and I'm excited to spend the next 20 minutes with you talking about modern authorization. So let's talk about the state of affairs in identity and access. In the identity world, things are pretty good. We've largely solved the problem of single sign-on for SaaS applications. No one remembers the days anymore where users had different user IDs and passwords for each SaaS application because now we have single sign-on systems. And so anytime you add a user to your single sign-on system, they have access to applications. And every time you add a new application, if it speaks the right protocols, OAuth2 and OpenID Connect and SAML and JWT, then those users are able to go log in automatically. Not so for access control. Access control is a total mess. It's what I call an N times M problem. Because every time you add a new user or add a new application, you have to manage the cross product of basically granting permissions to these applications to all these new users. It is a completely terrible state of affairs. And I would argue it's the number one issue that we face in the industry, in the identity and access management industry. Now, it's not all bad news. Authorization is finally finding its moment in the sun. And the good news is that the large technology companies that typically are the leaders in the space have spent a lot of time and attention on their own internal authorization systems and have been kind enough to share all of their lessons. And so now we get to learn about all the best practices of authorization. Google wrote a paper called Zanzibar about their internal system, so did Intuit about their system called AuthZ, and so on and so forth. And so we can basically look at all these new patterns and learn a lot about how to solve this problem once and for all. But there's also bad news. Uh, it used to be that the technology landscape in authorization was simple. You had RBAC as a model, LDAP as a protocol, and now you basically have a complete cacophony of acronyms and technologies and models and protocols and enforcement points and implementations, and it's very difficult to make heads or tails of this landscape. Not to mention a whole bunch of vendors. It used to be back when I was at Microsoft, we had 90% share of the directory market and the rest of the LDAP vendors had their other 10%. And now we have an explosion of vendors, each with their own approach to authorization. And so even though I've stated up front that authorization is the number one problem that identity and access teams face today, they're all frozen because there's just so much noise in the market, both on the technology side and the vendor side. And so in this talk, we are going to try to uh, simplify all of that and create a framework for how to evalu evaluate both technology and vendors. So let's break it down. Let's start first with the technology landscape and then we'll turn our attention to the vendors. Modern authorization really boils down to five patterns. If you read about all of the different papers that I put in the notes before, they all do um, like all these five things in a modern way. And so I'll first go through all the anti-patterns, how we do them today, and then talk about the best practices that we need to evolve to. The first one is, of course, each service or application does its own authorization, and we know why that's bad, n times n problem. The modern way of doing things is building a purpose-built authorization service that you can extend across a bunch of your different services and applications. Now, of course, the large technology vendors can afford to build their own custom one, and the rest of us need to go build on top of open source or maybe uh, buy a technology solution. The second anti-pattern is to use the old practice of coarse-grained roles. And so you either have um, you know, over-provisioning of permissions or you have role explosion. And the modern antidote to that is to practice some form of fine-grained access control. And there are a few different patterns for that, ABAC, REBAC, we'll cover those uh, next. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that you really want to adhere to the principle of least privilege so that you only grant the smallest number of permissions to a user to be able to do their job. The third anti-pattern is basically baking authorization logic as if or switch statements in each one of these services or applications. We call that authorization spaghetti code. And the modern practice is to extract 
the authorization logic out of the application and store and version it separately in its own document, in its own policy, thereby enabling a practice we call separation of duties, where the application developers focus on the application logic and then security engineers focus on storing and versioning and maintaining the authorization policy. The fourth anti-pattern is treating scopes that are baked into access tokens as if they were permissions. That's bad for a number of different reasons, much uh, the, the, the largest being, of course, that these access tokens survive for hours or days and by virtue immediately are essentially outdated versions of what a user can do. And the modern antidote to that is to make a real-time call to an authorization system with a user context, the permission and the resource context, and find out whether this user has access or permission to this resource just in time. And lastly, um, today, most applications, if they even have decision logs, uh, do it very inconsistently. The modern practice is to standardize and centralize every decision that every application makes into your logging systems for forensics and compliance. So let's focus on these three middle ones that I bolded here, fine-grained, policy-based, real-time, which are the most important characteristics of modern authorization. First, let's start with fine-grained authorization. We now see two ecosystems emerging in the cloud-native landscape. The first one is based on the Open Policy Agent project. Uh, I like to call this camp the Policy as Code camp. They're focused on ABAC, uh, attribute-based access control as a model, and there's a lot to like about OPA. First, it's a CNCF graduated project. CNCF is the closest thing we have to a standards body in the cloud-native community. There's a single open source implementation. It's a general purpose flexible engine and it's tailor-made for policy-based access management. It is the successor to ExactMol. Uh, many people say ExactMol is dead. If it's not dead, it's uh, dying and OPA is going to replace it. Um, there are some minuses though. The language, even though it's not angle bracket based, uh, it is still a difficult language to learn. It has a high learning curve. The language is called Rego. It derives from data log. Um, you basically have no opinions that OPA brings with it. And so you're left to design your authorization model from scratch, which is very powerful, but it's like building an assembler. And lastly, OPA has a, a policy plane, but it does not have a data plane. So the problem of bringing data to the engine is an exercise left to the user. On the other side of the fence, you have the Zanzibar ecosystem. So this is a set of patterns and vendors that have really kind of emerged as uh, a call to action from the Zanzibar paper. Uh, and I call this the policy as data camp. Uh, they believe in an opinionated model called the relationship-based access control model. And it's almost the polar opposite of OPA, where OPA has no opinion, Zanzibar has uh, a very specific opinion on how to structure authorization, really as a relationship graph between subjects, whether they're users, uh, or groups and objects that are things like organizations, departments, folders, and files, and so on. And so if you've ever used Google Docs and you've granted somebody viewer access on a document or editor access on a folder or commenter or owner, you've now essentially kind of uh, used the, the, the Zanzibar model. Now, there are some drawbacks as well. There isn't one open source implementation. Google didn't open source anything. They didn't even create a specification they created a technical report. And so a number of vendors, at least half a dozen of them, have created their own interpretation of the Zanzibar paper and open source those. So there are many different open source implementations. There's not a common schema or a data language. And it is hard, not impossible, but hard to go outside of the Reback model if you want to use attributes. And there's now emerging a third camp, which is the, let's take the best of both worlds. Topaz from Acerto is an open source project that attempts to do exactly that, which is take the best of OPA and Zanzibar and marry them together into a single open source implementation. And there are others that are starting to look at that approach as well. Next, let's talk about policy-based access management. And as a reminder, this is the practice of lifting the access control logic out of the application and storing and versioning it as its own policies code artifact. And so here I show a, uh, 
an example of a policy written in Rego that is the surface syntax for OPA or Topaz. It doesn't have to be that. It could be a Zanzibar manifest. But the idea is that you're lifting out all these rules and storing them separately. And thereby, the application becomes a lot easier to build and maintain. Here I'm showing uh, a Node.js application that has a route handler that just has a single um, middleware here called check C that will automatically call the authorizer with the user context and the resource context and the permission and find out whether or not this user has access to this resource and succeed or fail the operation based on the results of that. And so, of course, the benefits are that you can treat the authorization policy just like you can any other code. Every change to the policy is logged and maintained as part of a gate change log and the policy can be evolved by the security team independently of the application code. And the third pattern here that I want to get into is real-time access checks. Some people call that dynamic or just-in-time or um, real-time. Uh, these all mean the same thing, which is the application should call the authorizer right before it grants access to a protected resource, as opposed to relying on stale scopes in baked into access tokens. Um, authorization, if you're doing it in the critical path of every application request, really has to be a local operation. It has to be 100% available to the application and it has to be done in milliseconds. So the only option that you have is really deploying the authorizer right next to your application and you want to compute the decisions based on data that's local to the authorizer. That said, you want to compute decisions based on fresh data. And that's where this really becomes a distributed systems problem. You want to maintain and manage all of the artifacts used for authorization in a central manner. So, for example, users, uh, the uh, the system of record for users is an identity provider. You want those imported into the control plane and then distributed to all the authorizers that are hooked into that control plane so that anytime you add a new user, you automatically have that data available in the local authorizer. Likewise, policies should be stored in version and source control, but then anytime you have a change, you want a policy as code workflow to build and then distribute that policy to the, all the edge authorizers. And finally, you want to be able to gather all the decision logs from the edge and manage them centrally in your logging systems. Great, so we talked through all of the technology landscape. And now let's break down the vendors in the space along a number of different dimensions that we think are useful. Now, I'm not an analyst. I, I may play one on TV, uh, but I will put that analyst on for the next couple of minutes. Uh, but first, a disclaimer. Um, I, this really represents the best effort research that we've done in Asserto to best characterize uh, where all these vendors lie on top of these dimensions. Uh, if we've gotten any wrong, please let us know uh, and we will of course fix it and make it right. Um, also, it's important to note there's no right or wrong here. It's just go a good starting place if you're trying to evaluate which vendors essentially do things your way and match up to your requirements. So let's jump in. The first axis that we want to talk about is IT centric versus dev centric. And this is not to say that, you know, only IT or only developers are involved. Uh, but in the IT centric world, IT brings the solution to solve a problem for the entire organization in a top down fashion. They still need developers to implement it most often. And in the developer centric world, engineering teams bring the solution in to address requirements for a particular application or a set of applications. They still need organizational buy-in uh, from all their different constituencies. But the IT-centric uh, you know, vendors in this space include all the folks here on the left that really focus on solving the problem for an entire organization. Whereas the developer-centric solutions, and here I'm actually uh, carving it out further into three different personas. Uh, we have Mort's and Elvis's and Einstein's. I use this uh, taxonomy from Microsoft. It was uh, uh, what we used to represent three different types of developers that roughly map to Visual Basic developers, C Sharp developers, and C++ developers. So uh, on the Mort scale uh, is permit. They focus on low code or no code authorization. They try not to expose the authorization policy itself as code. Uh, 
the middle column is a set of vendors that really try to make it easy, but also uh, make a flexible solution that exposes the authorization policy and allows you to think about it as code. And then on the right side, we have um, Einstein level vendors that really uh, offer you technology that is very powerful, very flexible, but you really have to be a power user in order to uh, use it effectively. And I've put Styra in the middle here because even though they're a top-down type of solution that often is sold uh, at the organizational level, they also have an open source project, OPA, of course, that brings them in oftentimes in a bottom-up way. The second dimension I want to talk about is authorization model. And so um, all the way on the left, we have what I call the RBAC plus model, which is really multi-tenant RBAC. Permit, again, uh, owing to simplicity, uh, once you uh, basically optimizes for that type of model. Uh, and while you can add attribute-based access control, it's, they orient you towards a simple RBAC model. The next column is a set of vendors that focus on the ABAC model, attribute-based access control. Service is one of those. Cloudentity started with OPA, uh, and so they are an ABAC vendor. Plain ID started with Xacmo, so of course they are an ABAC uh, model. And then Styra, uh, of course, invented OPA, and so they also adhere to an ABAC model. The third column here is vendors that focus on the reback or graph-oriented model. The first four of these set out to build implementations of the Zanzibar paper, so they're very reback Zanzibar centric. Um, and the other two, Signal and Veza, are really they don't talk about reback or Zanzibar, but their internal data model is a graph oriented structure. So I put them in that column. And then lastly, there are a set of vendors that think about uh, trying to merge some of these models together. Asserto and Scaled Access started from OPA, but then added powerful graph-oriented capabilities that are based on the Zanzibar paper. And then Oso actually started before Zanzibar was published, but they also have a flexible hybrid model. And then the last access I want to talk about, uh, there are at least 10 of them, but we only have time for three, is uh, proprietary versus open source, the licensing model. On the left-hand side, you have a set of vendors that may use open source in their offerings, but ultimately they don't open source their own engine. And then on the right side, you have a set of vendors that are really open core. They have open sourced the core engine uh, and then built commercial solutions on top. And then I put permit somewhere in the middle because they are built on top of OPA and they have open source portions of their solutions, specifically the control plane but their core authorizer is not open source. So I kind of position them in the middle. So we've gone through all of these different axes, all the ones that we've had time to do. So now let's position Asserto on, you know, on top of this technology landscape and uh, what we actually focus on. So we strongly believe in fine-grained, policy-based, real-time access control. Uh, we want, for fine-grained, we want to support all these different access control types, RBAC, ABAC, and RBAC. So we've created a model that stretches across all of them. Uh, we've, we believe in policy-based access management. Uh, policy is expressed as a combination of Rego as well as a Zanzibar manifest. And we have a distributed systems approach to authorization, where authorization is done in real time, locally, but is managed by a distributed control plane. And of course, uh, we offer uh, compliance and forensics through centralized decision logs. And on top of that, we are a very developer-centric solution, so authorization can be added with a single line of code. Uh, it integrates easily with identity providers and source code repos and logging systems. And finally, we strongly believe in an open core model. So Asserto is based on the Topaz open source project uh, and is built uh, around the cloud native ecosystem. And that is it, folks. If uh, you're interested in getting more of this content, please drop us a line. We're planning on expanding the vendor map a little bit. And so if you're interested, uh, let us know and uh, send us an email. We'll add, us, add you to our mailing list so that we can send you the research as it becomes available. Thanks so much uh, for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this.